Today, we're going to be talking about integration by parts. So like how integration by substitution is an undoing of the chain rule, integration by parts is an undoing of the product rule. And to show you this, I'm going to have u and v both be differentiable functions of x. So imagine you have u times v. If you take the derivative of u times v, then using a product rule, this is first d second plus second d first. But now if we integrate both sides, this cancels to have uv. And we just have integral u dv plus integral v du. When we subtract integral v du from both sides, we get the famous formula. The integral of u dv equals uv minus the integral of v du. And this is a general integration by parts formula. Whenever we have an integral with two functions being multiplied by each other, we're going to call one of them u and one of them dv. But choosing which function is u can be a little tricky. So there's an acronym to help with that. And the acronym here is LIET. And each letter stands for a different type of function. Number one is logarithmic. Number two is inverse trig. Number three is algebraic, so stuff like polynomials. And number four is just normal trig. And finally, number five is exponential. So when you have an integration by parts problem, you'll have two functions being multiplied by each other. And each of those two functions will fall in one of these categories. And whichever function ranks higher on this list is u. The reason for that is, as we increase up this list, you'll notice that these function types are harder and harder to integrate. And looking at the formula, we see that we have to integrate dv to get v, but differentiate u to get du. So of the two functions that we're given, we want to make our integral as easy as possible. So we, whichever one is dv is the one that's easier to integrate, and whichever one is u is the hardest to integrate. Now I'm going to show you how to solve one of these problems. We're asked to find the indefinite integral of x sine x dx. So right away, you see that these two functions are being multiplied by each other. So that's a key indicator that you need to use integration by parts. And so now we need to pick our u and our dv. x is a polynomial, so it's in the a category. Sine x is normal trig, so it's in the t category. Since x ranks higher than sine x, we have u equals x and dv equals sine of x dx. Now, it's important that we bring the dx with us to dv because we can't integrate without a d something. A good way to solve these problems is using a uv table so that you stay organized. Now I'm going to differentiate u to get du. So we have u equals x. So du dx equals 1. And solving for du, du equals dx. So we have dx in this box. And then I'm going to integrate sine x dx to get v. So we have dv equals sine of x dx. So when I integrate both sides, the left just becomes v. And this is negative cosine of x. And by the way, when you're doing these intermediate integrations to get v, you don't add the plus c just yet. Now that our table's filled in, we can go ahead and solve using the formula. So we have this is uv, which is negative x cosine of x minus the integral of v du, which is v du, like this. So now this integral is very easy. So this is, we're going to bring down the negative x cosine x. And you'll see that these two negatives will cancel to make a plus. So we just have plus integral of cosine x, which we know is sine x. So, and now we add our plus c at the end of everything. But sometimes we might have to do integration by parts more than once in one problem. So consider the integral of x squared e to the x dx. So like always, we're going to start by finding our u and dv. So I have our box set up, and now it's time to check where these two fit on the ladder. So x squared is an algebraic 
so it goes here. And e to the x is an exponential, so it's down here. Since x squared ranks higher than e to the x, we're going to have u equals x squared. And dv equals e to the x dx. So now I'm going to differentiate u to get du, like so. And then I'm going to integrate e to the x dx to get v, like so. And now we can go ahead and use the formula. This integral is equal to uv minus the integral of v du, like this. And now notice, we still have two functions being multiplied by each other. So we have to do integration by parts again. So I'm going to set up my second box. And now we again have to check the rankings on this list. 2x is an algebraic, and e to the x is an exponential. So since 2x ranks higher, we're going to let 2x equal u, and dv equals e to the x dx. Well, we know from here that integral of e to the x dx is e to the x. And now I'm going to differentiate u to get du, like so. And now we just do the same thing again, but just for this integral. We still keep the x squared e to the x, but then we subtract now in the bracket, so our second uv minus the integral of v du. And now notice this is just the integral of 2 e to the x, which is 2 e to the x. So this can be written as like this. And we can go ahead and distribute the negative, like so. And if you really want to, we can factor out an e to the x, like so. And of course, don't forget your plus c. But there are some instances where it might look like integration by parts may go on forever. And to show you this, I'm going to solve this problem for you. We'll start by making our box and identifying u and dv. Okay, so I have e to the x and sine x. So e to the x is an exponential, so it's in this last category. And sine x is normal trig function, so it's above it. So since sine x ranks higher, we're going to let u equal sine x. And then dv will be e to the x dx. To find du, we're again going to differentiate u, get du equals cosine of x dx. And now to find v, we're going to integrate both sides, and we're going to find that v equals e to the x. Okay, now that we have the table completely filled out, we can go ahead and use the formula to get our answer. Integral of u dv is equal to uv, so e to the x sine x, minus the integral of v du, like so. And notice, we have e to the x times cosine x, so we have to do integration by parts again. Okay, so e to the x is in the e category, and cosine of x is in the t category. So we're going to let u equal cosine x. And then, of course, dv will be e to the x dx. So finding du, we have du equals negative sine x dx, and then we have v equals e to the x. And now we're going to use the integration by parts formula just for this, and then fill out the rest of this. So using the formula, the answer for this is uv, or e to the x cosine x, minus the integral of v du, or negative e to the x sine x, like so, which simplifies to this. But now you'll see that we have integral of e to the x sine x dx, which, if you'll remember, is the exact same problem that we're trying to solve in the first place. So it looks like if we keep going, it'll just end up in an infinite loop. So what can we do? And so here we're going to remember that just like numbers, we can add and subtract integrals from both sides. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add integral of e to the x sine x dx to both sides. And after doing that, we get 2 integral of e to the x sine x dx equals e to the x sine x minus e to the x cosine x. From here, we can just divide by 2 to get our final answer, like so. And of course, don't forget your plus c. So if you're ever in a situation like this, where you see the exact integral you're solving for on the right side, just go ahead and add it to the left. And we use integration by parts to solve things like this. Now, at first, you might be confused because you might only see that there's one function here, that's ln x. But if we rewrite the integrand, then you can see that we, in fact, can use integration by parts. So consider that the integral of ln x dx is equal to the integral of ln x times 1 dx. So here we can see that there's two functions being multiplied by each other, and then we can use integration by parts. Okay, so now I've made my box, and then we have to identify our u and our dv. This ln of x is a logarithmic, so it's in the L category. 
and 1 is in the algebraic category. So since ln x ranks higher, u equals ln x. And then we're going to have dv equal 1 dx. From this, we can see that du equals 1 over x dx, and we can see that v equals x. After our table is filled out, we can go ahead and use the integration by parts formula. uv is x ln of x minus the integral of v times du 1 over x dx. And the x and 1 over x cancel, so we just have integral of dx, which we know is just x, like so. And of course, don't forget your plus c. And that's how you solve integrals like this. And for one last example, I'll do the integral of arc 10 x dx. Like the ln problem, what we're going to do is first rewrite this as integral of arc tan x times 1 dx. And now we set up our box. So arc tan is inverse trig, so it's in the i category, and 1 is in the a category. So arc tan x is u. And from here, we can see that du equals 1 over 1 plus x squared dx. And once again, we see that v equals x. Now that our table is filled out, we can go ahead and solve. So we have uv, which is x arc tan x, minus the integral of v du, like so, which simplifies to this, which we can solve with some u sub. Okay, so here, I'm going to let u equal 1 plus x squared. And differentiating, we see that du equals 2x dx, but I have 1x dx up here. So I'm going to multiply by 2 on the inside and 1 half on the outside. So this becomes 1 half the integral of du over u, which is 1 half ln of u, which is 1 half ln of 1 plus x squared, like so. And then I'm going to make the substitution into our answer, and we're done. And of course, don't forget the plus C.